Well, we've got another crisis in the Middle East. This time it's occurring in Sudan. And once again, the United States of America has an opportunity to show its regional hegemonic strength in the Middle East rather than continue down the path of doing nothing. The path of doing nothing has unfortunately led to deals between Saudi Arabia, Iran, who used to be horrible enemies, now partnering through a broker deal by China because the United States isn't brokering deals in the Middle East anymore of the 78 attacks against Americans and American contractors in the Middle East. We've only responded to three of those attacks. We are coming across as very weak in the Middle East. Well, and this is why some say the United States dollar is potentially at risk of losing its reserve status. Now, Wells Fargo argues we are far away from losing the reserve currency status of the world, but a lot of folks are concerned about the future of America and American strength given the potential weakening of America in the Middle East. And now we need to discuss how America relates to Sudan. Yes, we now have a deadly crisis and battle occurring in Sudan. What you have are two groups. You have the Sudanese army and the rival paramilitary group fighting in Sudan. Uh, these groups, uh, well, the paramilitary group is the Rapid Support Forces Militia. It's just shortened the RSF. And uh, the RSF is known for its scorched earth tactics. They've got about 80,000 fighters per the International Crisis Group reports. And basically, here's what ha what's happening. You're at about the third or fourth day of violence now. There are somewhere around, uh, the last media reports were somewhere around 100 fatalities already. Some are calling this a civil war. Uh, those numbers seem to be rising right now. Let me take a peek here. This is the latest coming across the wire services. U.S. officials have been in contact with military leaders in Sudan, urging them to end hostilities immediately. A UN envoy, United Nations envoy on Sudan, says the warring parties are uh, not giving the impression that they are open to mediation. This is where the United States needs to potentially do something. Now, many people say, no, the United States needs to do nothing, but we already provide foreign aid to all of these countries. Saudi Arabia is already calling up the United States going, yo, what should we do over here? Uh, Sudan is like right across the pond from us and uh, we need some help over here. And the more the United States actually does nothing, the weaker the dollar becomes, right? So as easy it is to say the U.S. shouldn't be the world police. We send hundreds of millions of dollars, sometimes billions of dollars to nations in the Middle East. And we do that to maintain some semblance of control and be the country that people call when they need help. Well, right now, all we're getting from our administration is, hey, guys, stop fighting. And the UN's like, uh, we're going to need more than that because there's no indication any kind of fighting is going to stop. Three individuals from USAID have been killed. That is uh, the... Um, uh, food aid group in uh, Sudan trying to provide humanitarian aid and they have been killed so they've now frozen humanitarian aid in the region water facilities electrical grids are being attacked and destroyed in the capital a, uh, of, of Sudan a major water uh, uh, facility has been damaged affecting water delivery to uh, millions of individuals in Sudan a UN envoy is now reporting as of the last 15 minutes here that at least 1 185 individuals have been killed. More than uh, 1,800 civilians and fighters have been wounded. The Pentagon uh, is, uh, is, is evaluating but not really doing anything right now, and that's frustrating a lot of folks, again, regarding the United States' strength in the region. But uh, what's really happening here is you don't have a stable government in Sudan. It's worth knowing a little bit about the history, and this has been going back and forth for a while. Think about this. The last major leader who had the longest reign in recent history in Sudan, which, by the way, just knowing where Sudan is might help a little bit. You've got Saudi Arabia to the right. Then you've got Sudan just to the left of it. Above it, you have Egypt. 
And this, so this is kind of in the Middle East, which is the, no, the upper right corner of Africa is the way to think of it. And in 1989, you had Omar al-Bashir, who took control via a military coup after massive protests and 70% inflation. So you've got massive problems. You've got a financial problems in, in Sudan. You've got leadership problems. And really, his reign continued until 2019. When you had yet another coup and the military took over, ordering, ordering a military-imposed state of emergency and arresting al-Bashir. Then, in September of 2021, there was another failed coup. One month later, another coup attempt. Two months after that, in January of 2022, what do you have? The prime minister quits. Darfur is one of the regions within Sudan, and it's where you're seeing a lot of fighting that's happening, though fighting is really happening throughout the entire country uh, of, of Sudan right now. In fact, I'll throw up a, uh, a map in just a moment here to show you where some of this fighting is happening, and you can see how widespread the fighting actually is. The, uh, the fighting, unfortunately, uh, is also affecting the port uh, of Sudan, which is problematic because the port of Sudan is important for oil imports and exports uh, in the region. That's leading some to worry that oil prices could stay higher for longer. Uh, so far, this violence, uh, it doesn't seem to really, I mean, dare I say, hold a candle to what's happening in Ukraine, but it has the potential for escalating, and that's why a lot of folks are paying attention to it. Let's listen briefly to an Al Jazeera clip here where we can get a little bit of an intro of what it actually looks like on the ground over there. Smoke rise along the tarmac at Khartoum airport on a third day of fighting between Sudan's army and the biggest and most powerful paramilitary force. Explosions, airstrikes and gunshots are heard across the capital as both sides claim they're making advances in strategic areas. But details on the ground are unclear. Strategic areas, by the way, are going to include military bases, airports, and also the broadcasting network, right? The broadcasting network is central to controlling what people think in the region. And that's important because it's exactly why China controls its media. It's why North Korea controls its media. It's why China and North Korea, by the way, subsidize YouTubers who live in North Korea or in China to showcase how wonderful it is to live in China or North Korea. It's propaganda. This is understandable. This is normal. Every country has always instituted propaganda. The United States is no exception to that. Keep in mind, in 2022, we gave $800 million of foreign aid to Sudan, and they still can't get their act together. We've got a massive power struggle here. And the problem is, if the wrong side ends up taking control of Sudan, you could potentially have another very strong force that ends up aligning with our enemies, like Iran and Russia. Keep in mind, Egypt was just potentially implicated in wanting to send thousands of missiles that they manufacture to Russia. Now, that was just a consideration, but it's ridiculous that it was even a consideration after we sent over $2.5 billion of foreign aid to Egypt over the last four years. And that money could now be being funneled to manufacture weapons that are sold to Russia, basically using U.S. dollars to kill ourselves, essentially, or fight our own money in Ukraine, which is insane. But it shows you if the wrong power vacuum is established, or if there's a power vacuum in Sudan, and the wrong powers move in to then control Sudan, you could potentially have a new alliance between Iran, Egypt, and Sudan that then forces Saudi Arabia to align with them, with Russia and China, instead of the United States. This Sudan issue is a lot greater, and, and my heart goes out to the people who lose their lives in these conflicts. But this issue is a lot greater than just, oh, it's some African nation is warring again. This is all about oil, the United States dollar, and what is the United States going to do to make sure that we don't lose a country like Sudan, again, a country we almost gave a billion dollars to in 2022. How, what are we going to do to make sure we don't lose them to Iran 
And when we lose them to Iran, we lose them to China and Russia. And that's the real concern here. So this fighting has just begun over the last three to four days, but it's going to be something we have to pay attention to. The fighting is not backing down. If anything, it's getting worse. And unfortunately, this issue is starting to, to rhyme. We hear this over and over and over again, and the pain just continues and continues. Let's listen in for another brief moment here to Al Jazeera. Footage released by the Sudanese military shows a number of rapid support forces troops surrendering their weapons and equipment in Khartoum. The army says it's resumed control of state TV and will use it to update the public. It also says it's retaken Marawi Airport in the north. But that conflicts with claims by the RSF, which says its men still control the facility. Yeah. So uh, there's a comment here from Calvin Smith that says it's their choice, Kevin. Yes, you're right. But let me ask you this. Would we rather have countries ally with the United States or with China? The reality is we could pretend that we shouldn't have anything to do with foreign nations. But if we pretend that, guess who wins? China, Iran, and Russia, and potentially even North Korea. So you have to ask yourself, would you rather be involved in the other countries or just stick our head in the sand and pretend that eh, we're happy over here in the United States? Much like a plane without an engine, that might last for a while, but the more allies we lose in the international community, the weaker America becomes. And so it's not as easy as saying we should just mind our own business. We have as many, we have enough problems as home, at home. While that's true, while our political system is broken, by all means, we should be able to improve our education system, our health system, uh, the the uh, rigging of pricing at doctor's offices and in the healthcare system and, and drug manufacturers. We should be able to solve a lot of the issues we have at home. We can't turn a blind eye to what's happening in the Middle East because it just increases the likelihood of World War III. 